All right, if you'll open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, I'm uh, teaching a series on intimacy. And I have 10 points. And this is all about, this series is about intimacy with God. But understand that if you can learn to develop intimacy with God or learn to de develop intimacy with man, you, you, it goes back and forth. And somebody said, well, you, you refer to married couples. No, I refer to everybody. Because you want to be intimate with your roommate. You want to be intimate between an employer and employee. Yeah. You, see, intimacy has nothing to do with physical. Right. Intimacy has to do with relationship. It has to do with commitment. The, the first thing you have to do is realize it's a process. The second thing you have to do is you have to get to know the person. Know God would be that you're going to develop in your process with God of intimacy, that you're going to read his Bible, read the books that men and women write about God and, and revelation that they've received because it's a expose of a, a portion of God. And then the third one that we talked on was commitment. And today I'm talking about trust. You have to develop trust with God, but you have to develop trust with your spouse. You have to develop trust between you and the boss or you and the employee. You, you need to develop trust with, um, with your neighbor. Yes. And once you get this intimacy down, the great part about intimacy is once you develop the skill set, you can then do it anywhere, anytime with anybody at any level that they're open to doing it. And the more intimate you can be with someone and you engage these activities, because again, you gotta know it's a process of your development of intimacy. You have to know that it's a, um, you, have to, you have to get to know that person. The more you read my books that I've written, I've written books, my wife and I wrote a book together on parenting. If you read those books, not only will you know about parenting or honor or forgiveness or finances or whatever the book's on, but you'll know us. Yes. Yes. The more you hear me preach and, and tell, the more you'll know me. Right. Are you hearing me? So the more time you spend with God in quiet time and again, all these different things. So we're talking about trust. Yes. Listen, many people have a problem with trust. But the biggest reason you have a problem with trust is because you trusted the wrong person here because they looked good, smelled good, said something good, gave you a, a carrot that sounded good, and then you trusted them. It was wrong to trust them. You didn't have the other functions. You didn't study them. You saw their rippling muscles. You saw their beautiful cheekbones. And as a result, you trust it. It's easier. People buy into a lie many times easier than they buy into the truth. Because the lie says, whoa, we're going to make you rich overnight. Or I'm going to love you all my life. Just come live with me. And, and, and so, do you see, we, because we're looking for the riches, we're looking for the love, that we're attracted to that thing. So don't take your misplaced trust and pervert it today so you cannot trust. Bring yourself to a purity, a pureness of love and relationship with God. That's why God first loved us. I first loved my wife. She knew I existed but didn't get it. So I had to keep loving her. Do you understand? God keeps loving us. We have to open up to that love. And then you have to begin to trust that love. And the more you trust it, the more that you let it in. So my first scripture is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And you know what happens in a marriage relationship? There's people here, they're married to each other. They're living together, but they've grown weary. Because he said he would rinse out the tub and never does. Because she said she'd quit spending so much money outside the budget and she doesn't. 
because we break what we call trust, we grow weary. That's why God tells us every night we're to go to bed with a clean slate. I forgive you for everything you did do that I didn't want you to do and everything you didn't do that I did that I wanted you to. I forgive you. So then when you get up in the morning, there's nothing to forgive, nothing to make right. So I can't grow weary. But if you go to bed, oh, I can't believe they did that again. I mean, you know, that's it. That's it. I'm done. You have grown weary. It says grow not weary. For in due season. You know, what, how long is due season? A season is as long as the season is. A baby comes in nine months. An elephant comes, I believe it's two and a half years. It's been a while since I used that. Mice come in a couple weeks. So different things come in different times. But grown out weary. Once you grow weary, trust is broken. And you've chosen to break trust because you chose to trust the first time and you chose to stop having trust. So the first thing here, if you want to develop intimacy through trust, is grow not weary. Here, here's the thing. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That includes you, O oh beloved one. I know they're the bum, they're the rotten one, they're the one that are, is doing wrong, they're the one that didn't listen to you, they're the ones that doesn't care. But you have failed also, or come short. And again, if we're keeping a tally, we're going to grow weary. You don't, want to, you, you don't want to keep the tally going. So the first thing, you do not grow weary. For in due season you shall reap if you what? Faint not. So what's the key? Don't faint. Don't faint by not growing weary. Don't grow weary by keeping a tally. Listen, come, come on now. Some of you have grown weary with God. Because you ask God to save. You ask God to deliver. You ask God for a spouse. And I've been waiting so long. You know what I've learned this year? I learned that everything I was waiting for, God was waiting on me to be ready. As I'm telling you the flat out truth. You can blame it on anybody you want, but God was waiting on Billy B. That's Billy the Blessed. That's me. No, no, you need to hear this. You need to hear this because the fact of the matter is God was ready. God was ready with everything that I've received this year. God was ready for me to go on television. He, you know, TV's been around for 50, 60, 70 years now, whatever it is. God was ready. The equipment was ready. The stations were ready. The money was ready. But Billy needed to be ready. See, your spouse is already born. When will you be ready? But grown out weary. So I learned this year to grow, you know, not that I grow weary because I just had a dream come true. 55 years ago, the dream came to me, the, the thing I wanted, and I, I got it this year. Yes. 15 years ago, another dream I had came to me, and it came to pass this year. See, but if you grow weary, you're going to not have trust. And once you don't have trust, it's game over. Come on, relationship over, game over. You can still live in the same house. You can still work at the same place. But trust is kaput. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. How much? All, all your heart. Lean and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Now listen, see, when you have trust, you don't lean to your own understanding. Anybody married and is a guy? Amen. How do you handle a woman? Mark me well, said the wise old man. Let me finish it up. The way to handle a woman is simply love her. You're not going to understand her. If you do exactly what she said to do, you're going to be wrong. 
So trust in the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all your heart, and lean on understanding. Why? Because God is working on your behalf. God is orchestrating it. Don't, but you, if you, as soon as you start thinking about, oh, oh, my understanding. I don't understand it. Come on. If you try to, if you try to understand, you're going to fail. Because there's no way to understand God. There's no way to understand a woman. And there's no way to understand God. God gave you that beautiful woman so you'd say, wow, this is just like God. You, you, you don't understand. You have to trust. And then, in all your ways, acknowledge God. Acknowledge the, your roommate. Acknowledge your boss. And then they'll direct your path. Help me out here. Your path will be directed, but you first got to trust. You got to realize you're not going to understand. Then, then you've got to acknowledge and then you got to follow the path they give you. Because, see, but if you grow weary, back to our first scripture, then you don't trust anymore because you're running the tally. God didn't, God, I prayed for my grandmother to be healed and she died. What God didn't tell you because you wouldn't listen is your grandmother was praying she wants to go home and be with Jesus. She, she, she don't want to stay here. It's not that she doesn't love you. She knows you're coming. All right, let me give you the next one. Jeremiah 17.5. Jeremiah what? 17.5. Thus says the Lord, cursed. It doesn't say the Lord's cursing. It says, cursed is the man that trusts in man. And makes flesh, that means you're not making God in the spirit your way, and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Because, see, when you're counting on your God to bring, uh, your job, J-O-B, to bring your provision, guess what? You're counting on the flesh. You're counting on your education. You're counting on your MBA. You're counting on the, the college you went to. I went to this college. You see, you're counting on the flesh. When God says, cursed is the man, he didn't say, I'm cursing the man that trusts in man. He says, cursed is the man. And can I tell you something? You say, well, see, you just told me to trust, trust my roommate, trust my boss. Whoa, stop. This is the, the worst man you can trust is yourself. Yes. I didn't hear you. Amen. Because when you're putting your trust in yourself, you're not putting your trust in God. When you're putting your trust in yourself, you're not putting your trust into the people that God brought into your life for you to have those divine connections with. You, you don't have to listen to the preacher. How will they know unless the preacher is sent? Do you see where the disconnect comes? Because you're doing it on your own. I know that I cannot do what I do. I can't do, I, how much of it can't you do, Bill? I can't do any of it. I can't even figure out my own wife, and we've dated for five years, married for 50 years, and I realize today I know less about her than I ever thought I did. See, I'm, I'm the wise man. You, you see, I know there's a lot more to know. T tell me somebody, hear me. Cursed is the man that trusts in man, and when you've gotten in trouble is when you trusted in yourself and said, I got this. When we moved into this facility, the man said to me, and we'll cover the taxes. We're renting it when we first moved in. And we'll cover the taxes. I said, no, nope, you don't have to cover the taxes. I'll cover the taxes. Because the state of California in prior was giving churches, they didn't have to pay the taxes. Guess what? They changed it. Guess what? You know what the big struggle for me was? Cursed is the man that trusts in man. And I should have just shut my mouth and let him do what he was doing. And the big struggle I had all through the year was paying the taxes on the building. <laughs> Cursed is the man who trusts in man. See, I trusted in myself. I thought I knew what I was doing, but the law changed. Yeah. And it's changed back again now where you don't pay. But is anybody hearing yeah. what I'm saying? See, I thought I had it. Yeah. When you think you've got it, you're in trouble. You're cursed. 
When you think you don't need God, you're cursed. Yes. When you think you don't need tithes and offerings, I don't mean receiving them, I mean giving them, you're cursed. When you think you don't need your spouse anymore, you can do better on your own, you're cursed. Because you're saying, I'm going to trust in myself. Yes. You're cursed. You don't want to trust yourself. I don't want to trust me. Now listen, I can trust me. I just did a, a, a I swam, I, I built a pool, I swam in the pool, and I swam the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, right? No. Christmas Eve, I swam in that pool. Guess what? People say, how was it? It was awful. <laughs> Anybody know how cold it is? Anybody know how much mud I had to go through to get to the pool? Anybody know how cold it was when I got out, even if it was warm? No, no, hear, hear me, hear me. You know why I did it? Because I said I would. That's the only reason I did it. I don't want to get in that pool. I don't even like to swim. But I said I'd get in. See, and if I would have trusted in myself, I couldn't have did it. I had all kinds of people that helped me, people that drove me out, people that walked me in, people who helped, helped me get all my 32 layers of clothes off, <laughs> down to my bathing suit. Then I, then I got in the water and I said, listen, get ready to pull me out of here in case I have cardiac arrest or something. You know, I don't know. It's cold out there. How was it? It was not the thrill of my life. It was not the high point of the year. The only reason it was a high point because I was a man of my word, but I had to trust God to get in that water. I had to trust God to be out in public in my bathing suit. I had to trust God. It was cold. And am I glad I didn't do it on Christmas Day like I was going to originally do it because it was a raining and it was a pouring, and everybody that helped me on Christmas Eve was not coming to help me on Christmas Day. They were eating, partying. They were into it. And they weren't thinking of me, and I'd have been out there all by myself, couldn't get undressed, couldn't get dressed, you know, freezing, couldn't keep the truck running for me. Who's hearing what I'm saying? See, cursed is the man who trusts in man. I refuse to trust in myself. And, and, and I'm, I went through a whole system. It's I'm telling you. How was it? It was wonderful. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you what curse means. It means literally to curse, to denounce. Let me put these on. To curse, to denounce evil against. You're proclaiming evil. When you're cursing something, you're proclaiming evil against. Or to imprecate evil. I, I thought we eliminated it. On, hence, to detest utterly. Cursed is the man. You're detesting utterly the things of God because you're trusting yourself. To abhor, to abominate. Listen, we don't want to do this with God. We don't want to do this with anybody. Cursed, we're cursing ourselves when we trust in ourselves. Cursed is Bill if he's going to trust in Bill. And yet we trust ourselves because. We're supposed to pray about everything. We're supposed to say, God, am I supposed to go to the mall today? God, am I supposed to go to the movie tonight? God, yes. cursed is the man who trusts a man and says, I don't need God. I don't need, I don't need my spouse. I don't need to ask their opinion. Or thought. Come on, I'm a big boy. I'm a big girl. I can do what I want. I don't need their help. You know what I find? I can't live my life at the level I live it without a whole lot of help. I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm blessed, I'm prosperous. I've got all these wonderful things in my life, but I can't do it myself. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't trust myself to pick up my car from the shop. Someone else did it for me. I can't trust myself to go to the bank. You know, women, it's not that I'm dishonorable or gonna steal the money, but I, other people go 
and I'm, I'm cursed if I trust my, I become an abomination to myself if I'm go, trying to do everything myself. Now, if God's telling me to go, go to the bank, then I go to the bank. Cursed is the man that trusts in man. And, he, and guess what the other part of that verse says? And will not see when good come. If you're not surrounded by good and get blessed are the pure in heart, another part of the purity for the year, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Somebody said, boy, that was a new revelation for me. If you don't see God when you look at me, you have the impure heart. And that's in your spouse and in your kids. What do you see? But my point is, and you won't see when good comes. Why? Because you're not looking for good because you're trusting yourself. You're so busy making your own map way, your, your provision, your this, your that, that you can't see when good comes because you're so focused. You're, come on, we've all done it. We're so focused on something that we can't see. We can see with our eyes, but we're not, we're, we're not comprehending. My final scripture here, and I, I, I hope I'm getting this across to you. Oh, my God, this means something to me. See, you've got to trust God. Yes. You've, got to, you've got to abandon yourself and realize that as educated, as smart, as, as much Bible knowledge and natural knowledge and as good as you are at your job and everything else, that you need God. And you need to be able to trust him because if he's there, but you can't trust him. If you can't trust your pastor, if you can't trust your spouse, if you can't trust your roommate, come on. You're tired of locking your door, making sure everything's in the room because they might be carrying some of the stuff off. That's, that's no fun way to live. And you're cursed. It's an abomination. But there's a, another verse here in the trust column. It's Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 7. Blessed, remember, cursed is the man who trusts in man. What's this one say? Blessed is the man who who trust. Uh, just a quick definition of that is confident or sure. See, when you, I trust this platform to hold me, so I don't mind getting up on it. Yeah. But if I saw the singers in the, in the floor waving and somebody falling through, I'm not getting up here. I'm preaching off the floor. Because yeah. I don't have any trust. There's no confidence. There's no there's no uh, sureness. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to learn to trust someone other than ourselves. Just don't trust the wrong person. Right. 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 Yeah. There's bad ministers, bad firemen, bad policemen, bad doctors, bad mothers, bad fathers, bad men, bad women. Come on. Yes. Yeah. So you can't say, well, they're this. You can trust them. You, you, you develop trust. I'm, I'm not asking you just to trust me, but Watch my life. Watch my words. I said for over a year now I'm going to swim. I swam. Develop trust. You don't have to rush in today, but start. So here it is. Blessed is the man who trusts, is confident or sure, in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. See, when you trust the Lord, your hope is in the Lord. So, ladies and gentlemen, you trust God who then tells you you can trust this person. Oh, come on, I'm giving you a nugget here. If you can trust the Lord and build trust with Him, then you can trust that you have the right roommate that you can trust. You can trust that you have the right boss that you can trust. You can trust that you have the right employee that you can trust. You can trust, come on, help me out. You can trust that God's working because he tells you to watch, you watch. Yes. But if he tells you to trust, you can trust. Yes. Yes. It's all up to us with God. God. So this point, if you're going to have intimacy, you're going to have to have trust. Yes. You, sh you want above all else to have intimacy with God. But some of us have to start to develop not only our intimacy with God, but we have to in start to develop our intimacy with man, which, remember, has nothing to do with physical. I'm talking about intimacy, one heart, one mind, one accord. Purity of purpose, a willingness to yield ourselves. We want to know, first of all, it's going to take a process. We need to know that I've got to get to know them, their writings, their who they are. I've got to talk with them. 
We've got to know it's going to take a commitment on my part. If I'm going to have intimacy with anybody, it takes a commitment. It takes a commitment to even learn intimacy. Trust. God loves you. We love you. And once you come to trust, you're going to come to a much higher level of intimacy with God.